beautiful buildings and bicycles. Cambridge is the last remaining university in England to have all-female colleges, a feat some see as behind the times. But is it? It began as a dining group years and years ago, um, and it was fellows who, um, who in a sense were married to men who were teaching in the university, but women who had specialisms of their own, who were academics in their own right, and there was no way of being a fellow in a college at that time. So they used to meet together over coffee, and then eventually they met and um, they formed a dining group. And that dining group grew into what is now, what is now the college. So it, it started very informally. Psychology undergraduate Sarah says the all-female college is academically beneficial, but less fun. I'm not really enjoying my university experience, but on the other hand, you know, I'm coming up to 27 now. I want to get a really, really good degree, you know, and I did a lot of partying in my teens, so I'm here for the degree, really, so, yeah. While this historical college is still a picture of its traditional past, some believe it's a valuable part of society. Still only about 16% of full professors at Cambridge are women. So I think that there's still a role for these kinds of all-female colleges to help promote women. The real advantage being that particular sensitivity, perhaps, to the needs of female students. It does feel safe. I like the fact that it feels like it's really close-knit and we're like a mini community in a, in a way and we have women from various backgrounds here and I also find it quite inspiring because there are women here who've worked in, I don't know, they've maybe worked in law for the past 10 years and then they've decided they want to study their degree. There's women like me who've put it off for almost six years and then decided, okay, I'm going to go to university now and uh, uh, finally do this. <laughs>